If you've created a mind map in Google Maps like this, uh, you can do some things with it, but there's a lot more that you can do with it if you import it into Google Earth. But exporting it out of my maps isn't really obvious, uh, but it's not that hard to do. Let me show you how. Uh, the first thing to know is that if you have several items that are in your project, and you can see we have lots of items here, uh, you wanna make sure that everything that you want to be included in the file that you're exporting has a check mark. So notice that if I uncheck this, that item disappears from the map display. And if we check it, then it reappears. So just make sure, like this one's not checked, if you want that included, you want to make sure that you check that as well. Now that we've got all of our boxes checked, we're going to come up here to the upper left hand corner. And you'll see that there's three stacked dots, kind of the vertical dots. And when we click that, we get this little menu. And there's several things that you could do here. But one of the most important, in fact, there's two items I think that would be of interest. One is you can download KML. So when it comes to these geographic and mapping type programs, KML and KMZ would be the file extension that you're looking for, particularly if you want to bring it into Google Earth. But notice that it also says you can view this in Google Earth. Now, one of the things I teach on uh, quite a bit in my videos is that I use the Google Earth software and that software that you download for free to your computer. That has all the bells and whistles that you could possibly want. There's also a Google Earth for mobile, which is the app version, and there is the web version. If you click this view map in Google Earth, you might be thinking, oh, great, it's gonna load it up in the software program I have installed on my computer. But that's not what happens. They now load it directly into the web version of Google Earth, and that's what you're looking at here. This is fine, you can use it, but it still doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Google Earth the software has. So we are gonna close this tab because we need to actually export this as a KMZ file so that we can open it up in Google Earth. And that happens outside of your web browser. It's not part of the web browser. So we're gonna come back to our three dot menu here and that's where we need to focus on download KML. Now KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language. That's just, you know, what they call the, the geographic type files, and that's fine. You're probably more familiar with seeing KMZ. The difference between the two is just that the KML is a single item. Let's say, for example, uh, the rivers and creeks, that's a single item KML as long as there's not a whole bunch of other nested items. You know, single items, single markers on your map are KML. When you have several, like we have in this project, well, when you save that, you're gonna be exporting it as a KMZ, and that's a Keyhole Markup zipped folder. And really, it's zipping all the content that you created that we have checkmarked into one file. That's what you want. Now, don't worry that this says download KML by clicking this, it's going to detect that you actually have more things going on and it's an entire project. So we're gonna click this and you'll get this pop-up menu. Now, it might seem like, oh, let's just export as KMZ, but see, it doesn't support all the icons. You wanna make this usable online. Even though this says KML, that's the one you want. So we're gonna click that and then click OK. This is going to export the file to our hard drive. So it becomes a standalone zipped project folder. Notice uh, that down here, it says it is a, going to be a KMZ. It detected that there's more than one item. It's not just a KML. So I have selected my downloads folder. That's where I'm gonna save it to. We're gonna keep the name that uh, was given to the original project file. And I've downloaded this before, so you see there's a one in parentheses. You'll just have it uh, just like this. And this can actually replace the file that I had here before. So I have the name of the file that was in the original My Maps. We're gonna uh, export it, save it as a KMZ. So we'll click Save. And yep, I'm gonna replace it. If you're doing it for the first time, you won't need to replace anything. It'll just download to your, fo your folder. 
Okay, so we can see it here in the bar down below. If you click the up arrow, you can uh, actually open it to show it on your hard drive in the folder where it's saved. We put it in the downloads folder. We can also click open. What that would do is it would open the KMZ in a program that could read it. What program is that? That's Google Earth. So as long as you have Google Earth already installed on your computer, you could click that and it would open it up. You can also do it without even using the menu. Just double click on the file itself. Notice that now in our taskbar, we see the Google Earth icon. So my computer detected, oh, this is a KMC file. So we need to open the program that supports that. That's Google Earth. Very often you'll see this happening. So what Google Earth is trying to do right now, it's trying to not only show you the file that you're trying to open, but it's at the same time, it's trying to load the entire Google Earth program, which is a pretty robust file. So it takes a moment. Give it a couple of seconds. If you see it not responding, don't panic. You don't need to do a, you know, a hard reset or, or close it out. Let it process for a second. It'll take probably less than a minute and Google Earth will get loaded. Okay, which it did here successfully. So where is this file? Well, it's over in our places panel. In Google Earth, you've got three panels here on the left hand side. There's search where you can look for places. There's the places panel, which is your files. These are saved to your hard drive. We are connected to the internet because Google Earth requires that to be able to function, but we these are not published on google.com. These are your private files and they are only on your computer. And then down below we have the layers panel. If we turn those on, we're actually streaming data that uh, enriches what we're doing here on Google Earth. So that's really cool. But where's our file? It is in the temporary places folder at the bottom of your My Places panel. Because this was your file, you opened it, it was on your hard drive, and it is now saving the entire zipped file to temporary places. If I were to look at this file and um, work with it and then close Google Earth, it would not save it. It's temporary. In fact, Google Earth doesn't auto save. And that's a really important thing to understand about this when you're trying to um, save your My Maps projects over to Google Earth is you want to make sure that you save it. So the first thing I'm going to do is click down here in the description of the file itself. You can see it here. And uh, I'm going to drag it up to my places. I have other folders I've created and other files I've saved. Now I need to save my work before I do anything else so I, I can keep it and it will be here the next time I open Google Earth. So we're going to go to file, save, save my places. All the places in your in your places panel, that's what you're trying to save. So save my places and uh, it'll run. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, there'll be that little spinning blue while it's processing, but it takes a few moments. It'll save everything for you. So this folder, a little bit more about this. If you want to be able to work with your My Maps project here in Google Earth, you need to know how to manipulate it here in the places panel. And so notice that there's a little arrow and that indicates this is a nested project folder, if you will. The globe is, it's a KMZ project. That indicates that. Click that arrow and inside is the actual My Maps folder or the project. And so when it zipped it, it made the main project zipped. Here's the folder from My Maps and this also is nested. So if we click that arrow, now we see that all the work that was done in My Maps was in different categories, each one. My Maps made a folder for us, very nicely organized. And each one of these has nested content as well. So if we open up one of these, we'll see all the items that we have added to the My Maps project. And that means you can now work with these. So let's view the entire project. We're gonna come back up to the top. Here's our, our globe for the main project. And I'm gonna double click this area. I'm not gonna click this link, because if I do, it's just gonna show me the description of the project. We're gonna click outside the link, anywhere on that item in this blue area. 
And there it is. Everything that you saw in my maps is now in Google Earth. So this is terrific. Now, you might not want to look at everything all at once. So notice that each one of these has a check mark. You know, not only do folders have check marks, but each item within the folder. So you can control to a single item being removed to uh, let's turn off this one here, the entire folders worth of content and notice stuff will disappear from the screen. If I turn it back on, it comes back on. Let's do this one. All the rivers disappeared. You just can turn on and off what it is you wanna view. So while you're including all of the elements as part of your project that you did in my maps, as you work with this data, you may not want to look at everything uh, because there's a lot going on here. Maybe you want to focus on a particular area of the project. You can do that by unchecking the entire project folder. And then let's just pick rivers or let's just add the surveys. And we can work with those and we can continue to add items to this as well. So if I click this folder within my zipped project, this is the, the top level folder. And I want to make sure that my next item that I add is going to be added to this project. Then I can just add a place mark. I can title it and click OK. Now that item is at the bottom of this folder. So when I close the folder, you can see it's in here. It's part of the entire project. So I can add more folders, more place marks, more items. And then the beauty of being in Google Earth is you can come down to the layers panel and you can start to turn on other points of interest, other data that can be streamed through your internet connection, things like borders and labels. So that tells us which county we're in. I think that's the counties. Here we go. Uh, you could also put in road names. So that streams in a ton of data. So if you wanted to know, well, what's the closest road to this new place mark? It's at the corner of uh, Telegraph and Gallagher. There's also buildings and there's items in the gallery and you can even add historical maps. So there's a lot of data here. That's what we teach here uh, at Genealogy Gems and in my book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox. Uh, you can find all of that at genealogygems.com or in the video description. So there you have it. You now have your My Maps project saved to Google Earth. And because I added a new item, I did some other things. Last thing we're going to do is go up to the menu and do File, Save, Save My Places. Give it a moment to save. And now I can close Google Earth and know the next time I come back in, that project is still there and I can keep working on it. If you'd like to learn more about how to use Google Earth, specifically for genealogy and family history, uh, head to my website, genealogygems.com. You'll find a link in the video description below, as well as a link to my book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox. That book has several chapters outlining lots of different projects that you can do in Google Earth. And you could certainly use your newly exported and imported My Maps project as your starting point. Thanks so much for watching, my friend. Talk to you soon.